Ngayong taon ay bibigyan din ng parangal sa ikatatlumput dalawang gawad ustetika si Ginoong Jesus T. Peralta, antropologo at consultant sa National Commission for the Culture and the Arts. Bukod sa mga tanyag na pagkakakilanlan, si Peralta ay isa ring pintor, litratista at manunulat sa Pilipinas. Nakapagtapos siya ng pilosopiya sa Universidad noong 1955 at kumuha siya ng Master of Arts in Anthropology sa Universidad ng Pilipinas noong 1972. Nakuha niya ang kanyang doktorado sa University of California, Davis. Naging Director 2 si Peralta sa National Museum of the Philippines bago siya nagretiro noong 1997. Nakilala siya sa larangan ng panitikan nang nanalo siya ng dalawang parangal sa bigating mga patimpalak sa isang taon. 1957 nang iuwi niya ang unang gantimpala sa Palangka Memorial Awards for Literature One Act Play Category para sa kanyang obra na The Judas at maging ang unang gantimpala sa Arena Theater Playwriting Contest para sa kanyang dula na The Other Son. Kilala rin siya bilang Hall of Famer sa Palangka Awards bilang isang premyadong mandudula matapos mag-uwi ng sampung parangal. I'm a freak in my family. I'm the only one who entered this field. Oh, well, my sons are actually in the same field as I am now. I didn't set out to be a writer, actually. Uh, when I studied in Letran, Uh, Rolando Aquino and myself were classmates. We were very, very close friends. After we graduated from Letran, we didn't know exactly where to go. Uh, so we entered philosophy. I entered philosophy. Actually, before that, he entered law, pre-law, and I, I entered pre-medicine. The problem is, when I see blood, I faint. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean. So I didn't know what to take, so I took a philosophy, and I, I loved it. Somehow I got involved with people in the varsitarian. I knew most of the people there, and many people in USA before in my class were in the newspaper business. They were journalists. They were right. They were writers. And, uh, uh, can't remember all their names now. I think one of them asked me to write an essay for the Varsitarian. I forgot what it was, but that started me off. And then I got heard of uh, the P Palanca Memorial Awards. There was one man, I forgot his name now, who he now teach. I wonder if he's still alive. He used to teach at the Iowa University. He was well known for his writings. I want to see whether I can shoot him down. <laughs> in terms of writing. Somehow I was successful. Uh, I went into theater simply because when we were in Letran, both Rolando Tinho and myself were involved with a priest. Uh, his name was Father Augusto Francisco. During graduation, he used to put up a tableau vivant and we participated there. So our theater uh, beginnings are from this uh, tableau vivants uh, put up by this uh, Dominican priest in Letran. So, uh, Rolando Tinho went into directing and production. I went into writing uh, plays. So that's it, I kept on writing plays. Uh, first time I tried it, I won Uh, the Arena Theater. Uh, if you've heard of that, it's sponsored by the Ford Foundation. The one in charge was became finally a national artist. There too. Same year I won also in Palanca. So I kept on writing. Uh, however, the time came when I grew tired of it. But I stayed on for the reason that I'm sure there's somebody, a young man or younger person, who out, who's out there who wants to shoot me down. So I kept on writing. There were young men who became very successful after me. After I won 10, I stopped. 
then uh, well, sometimes they gave, they placed me in the Hall of Fame. But also after that, people thought my plays were poetic. So I tried my hand at poetry making. I was not good at all. Yeah, fair. Not that good. I also went into painting during that period after graduation because my first job was executive secretary of the Art Association of the Philippines. So I knew all the artists, the, the old guys, like Manansala, Lorenzo, La Bottom Francisco, they were all my friends and colleagues. So, so that's why I got drawn into painting also. And more so in art criticism. What do I think is my father's attitude towards writing? I, I think he's he's a he's a man who, who combines both fields. Like like I mentioned to you yesterday, he was uh, he's both in arts and sciences, first in the arts and then sciences. I, I think he's he's a man who tries to combine uh, who tries to combine both philosophies. Um, he writes scientifically, logically. And yet he, he does so with always with an artistic bend in mind. Um, he's, he aims to not only to educate but also to uh, to please in an artistic sense. Um, also, I, I I think he's he also likes to uh, to teach life's lessons, so to speak, without without actually preaching. So I, I think that's his his main philosophy in writing. Or, in, in, in anything that he does actually. He is more of a teacher. As yung advisor, teacher, he's very generous. Yung daming matututunan sa kanya. Yung generosity niya. Yung, yung lahat nung nalalaman niya. He shares it with um, kung sino yung kung sino yung gustong matuto. Very open siya. I don't think I'm very proud about my father is that even though he's uh, he held a, a pretty high position in, in government, uh, he's he's one of those people who who always lived his life with integrity. Um, even though he had many opportunities, of course, to advance his his station in life, he, he he never did so. He never took advantage of anyone. Never took advantage of his of his position. Uh, he also liked to help other people. Most especially, he liked he liked to lead by example. So I I, I think that would be his, his greatest contribution. Not, not just in, in 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 the fields that that he excelled in, but also in his his manner of life. Very dedicated. He's he's completely absorbed. Uh, he'll he'll let's say you know he's he's in front of his computer. Uh, he'll he'll ask my mom to to, to put the TV down. <laughs> he'll ask he'll ask me to 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 quiet down also to just take a nap, not bothering. So he's really self-absorbed. He's like a laser. He's focused on on what he needs to do, and he he doesn't stop. He's, he's he he just keeps working until it's until the job's done. That I was a pioneer because there were no uh, art critics before. Uh, very few anyway. There was uh, Leo Vanessa, there was uh, Larry Franca, Fra uh, Larry Francia, I mean. Uh, most of them are really short story writers and they're into the writing art criticism. So I got into that. That's why I know the early part of uh, art history in the Philippines. That's why when the Art Association of the Philippines began to compile uh, a history of the of art in the Philippines. They gave me the earlier portion because I'm the only guy living now who have lived long enough to still remember you know, this uh, early part of uh, Philippine art history. I was putting up art exhibitions too since I was executive, executive secretary of the Art Association of the Philippines. It was the only art association before, and its uh, membership has still been wide. Because of my 
experience in putting up art exhibitions, the National Museum got me in to put up their exhibitions. I didn't know anything about the National Museum. Every time they asked me to put up a show, like for instance, botany, I, I studied botany. And so on. If it's zoology, I studied zoology first. And when they started to put up exhibitions on anthropology and archaeology, I studied that too very well. But la uh, later on I found out archaeology sounds glamorous, right? But actually it's mechanical. It's more of an art than a science. Uh, I can easily teach you to be an archaeologist, to excavate. But unless you are an anthropologist, you cannot interpret what you excavate from archaeology. Because there is no theory in archaeology. Theories are in anthropology. Uh, my degree then was philosophy. As I feel like this, I told you. I'm not qualified to work in the National Museum or Archaeology with that background. I said, if I'm going into archaeology and anthropology, I have to go back to school. Uh, I was pretty old already. I started with UP. But the problem with UP is that my teachers were also my colleagues. Uh, I had more experience, field experience, than they have. Because academic, they are not able to go to the field. But since I work with the National Museum, I'm very experienced in Philippine prehistory, methodology and archaeology, practicing all the techniques as well. I've written manuals on uh, field manual on archaeology, which is adopted even by other Southeast Asian countries like Malaysia, Indonesia. I also wrote a manual on uh, field ethnography is also adopted. The trouble with the manual in archaeology is became a bible for part hunters. So that is, I began writing in archaeology. So I stayed in, in anthropology and archaeology throughout. But when I retired from the National Museum in 1997, the NCCA invited me to join them as a consultant in computers. I did not study computers. So. I mean, I didn't have any formal education. It's hard knock school. I, I taught myself. I, I made, I, I introduced computers in the National Museum for the use of computers there. And I also designed and made the website of the, of the museum. I don't know how I did it now. Uh, somehow I managed to make a website for the National Museum. So when I retired, the NCC invited me to come in, help them set up a, uh, an IT unit here. When I came in, they had two websites. I was wondering why. I found out there are two parties here contending one against the other and each put up a website for the NCCA it got quite confusing so I, I convinced to put it together into one I started to develop the unit but it developed such that they outgrew me uh, now this unit is a highly professional unit I ask them questions about it to help me out now. This they have outgrown me. They, they have a formal training. I did not have any. And by the time I got older, I have forgotten all what the thing that I knew about computers. I go to him a lot for advice, actually, Lala uh, Nab, when it comes to you know, uh, Vietnam and in particular to the ICEH. He's very knowledgeable because he knows a lot. But uh, most of the time, let's say, like, pretend, feeling like if he doesn't know it at the top of his head, 
he'll try his best to help you research about it or kung meron man siyang inventory he'll find like all the resources for you pero ikaw mismo ikaw, you have to be done to put in the effort para gawin mo may, may pagka professor din kasi si Doc P eh, the way that he uh, ano, works with you I am for the turbulence of beating wings like fury among dust. Pick me up grain by grain from aching eyes of women reapers.